Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IS. I am Pooja Devi and in this segment today we are going to discuss about India and the G7 countries. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains papers. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi will participate virtually in the outreach session of G7 summit on June 12th and 13th. The Ministry of External Affairs has said that and let's talk about G7 countries. What are G7 countries? Group of 7 is a group consisting of the countries of Germany, UK, France, Canada, US, Italy and Japan with Russia along with it it is known as G8 and of course G7 is a part of G20 which contains these many countries of which India is also a part. So G7 is an intergovernmental organization that was formed in the year 1975. The bloc meets annually to discuss issues of common interest like global economic governance, international security and energy policy. Now the G7 does not have a formal constitution or a fixed headquarters. The decision taken by leaders during annual summits are also non-binding in nature. G7 is a bloc of industrialized democracies and that is I have already named them and the G7 was known as the G8 for several years. after the original 7 was joined by russia and the group returned to be called g7 after russia was expelled it was expelled of course after the annexation of crimea in 2014 let's talk about the highlights of the meeting the uk actually holds the position of president of the g7 and has invited india along with the australia republic of korea and south africa as a guest country for the summit and it will be held in hybrid mode The theme for the summit is Build Back Better and the UK has outlined four priority areas such as leading the global recovery from coronavirus while strengthening resilience against future pandemics promoting future prosperity by championing free and fair trade tackling climate change and preserving the planet's biodiversity championing shared values and open societies since 2014 This is the second time PM Modi will be participating in G7 meeting. India has been invited by the G7 president, France president, French president in 2019 at the Biarritz summit as a goodwill partner and the prime minister participated in these sessions on climate, biodiversity, oceans and digital transformation. Russia was indefinitely suspended we have already discussed that and the former us president that is donald trump had suggested that the group of 7 be called g10 or g11 and proposed that the grouping meet in september or november 2020 now what out what is there to watch out for the current summit this will be president biden's first visit to europe where he will signal his key message america is back and the ties in this ties particularly well with the us president's initial foray into multilateralism he held the first summit of the leaders of the quad along with australia india and japan that is a that is an informal grouping and the this was aimed at increasing vaccine production and aligning their position towards beijing china according to us media reports the biden administration is set to buy 500 million doses of pfizer biontech vaccine for the international distribution doses will be aimed at developing countries what's in it for india now donald trump's offer to expand g7 fitted into new delhi's idea of being a part of the global high table especially with chinese presence looming large and a more volatile and of course unpredictable global scenario as india faces a massive shortage of vaccine we have a vaccine crunch so this will be a very specific area g7 meeting will be a very specific summit for india in order to see what lies ahead for india when it comes to having procurement of vaccines last week the us also said that it will distribute vaccines to india as a part of its strategy for global global vaccine sharing and the us statement also said that the biden harris kamala harris administration will bring sharing the first 25 million doses of covid vaccine as a part of the framework for sharing at least 80 million vaccines globally at the end of june this means that india is likely to get vaccines from the us both directly as well as through covax initially estimates suggested india will get about 2 to 3 million vaccines in the first tranche moving on let's look at the vaccine crunch for india this was a prediction and the problem lies ahead for the growing demand of vaccine because of the growing population and that is why g7 summit is going to be extremely important for india let's talk about certain international vaccine programs first of all we will talk about gavi 
this is can you please tell me the full form of gavi in the comment segment it was created in 2000 and as an international organization it was created a global vaccine alliance bringing together both public and private sectors with the shared goal of creating equal access to the new and underused vaccine for children living in the world's poorest country now it has extended to the adults as well gavi brings together developing countries and donor governments who unicef world bank and vaccine industry in both inter industrialized and developing countries researchers and technical agency civil society bill and melinda gates foundation and other private philanthropists let's talk about covax covax is a joint initiative of cepi gavi unicef world health organization and at this if we talk about properly covax it is one of the three pillars of the access to covid 19 tools accelerator which was launched in april 2020 with the help of world health organization and european commission and also france in response to the covid 19 pandemic now covax is an effort to ensure that people in all corners of the world will get access to covid 19 vaccines once they are available regardless of their wealth and the initial aim is to have 2 billion doses to be available by the end of 2021 let's see where it goes moving on india may not this is this is in conclusion to everything that has happened first of all chinese presence is looming large in the asia pacific region especially also in the indo in indian ocean region the pacific region that is why cord is being strengthened so much and india has to balance out its relation with russia as well and as the US president is about to meet Russia on June the 16th, this is going to be a very important meeting because India has been a good friend of Russia as well as the US since a very long period of time. But India may not accept G7 digital tax proposal as equalization levi, it generates larger share of profit. That is according to the experts. Why? If we talk about equalization levi, Equalization levy is aimed at taxing foreign companies such as Facebook, Twitter and that the entire aim of it is to see that taxes are getting paid in the country where they are earning profits. So the equalization levy has a very, it's a, uh, for foreign companies which have a very significant local client base in India. They are billing them through different offshore units. So equalization levy is actually a levy of 6% that has been enforced since 2016 on payment exceeding rupees 1 lakh a year to a non-resident service provider for online advertisement. And the amendment to the Finance Act of 2020 had expanded the ambit of the equalization levy for non-resident e-commerce com companies involved in the supply of services including online sale of goods and provision of services with the levy at the rate of 2% since April 1, 2020. So let's see what happens on the June 12th and 13th. So let's get to our question as well. Discuss India's position in the post-COVID world with respect to G7 countries in 250 words. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching.